Another company investing an enormous amount in AI, $600 billion in this case, Meta uh, investing uh, in AI infrastructure and jobs in the United States. Joining us right now is Joel Kaplan. He's Meta's chief global affairs officer. Joel, it's great to have you on the broadcast. Great to be here. Thanks, Andrew. So we've been having this sort of running debate uh, with all sorts of business leaders this morning, especially in the AI, big tech, hyperscaler space, uh, about the economics of it, about whether it all works, whether it all maths out. Um, you're spending an extraordinary amount of money, but you're also doing it slightly differently, which is in some cases you've actually partnered with others, and I'm thinking of Blue Owl and the like in terms of private credit, so that you're not actually paying for all of it when you're building some of these data centers. How are you thinking about it, and how do you think the way you're thinking about it may be different than some of the others? Well, thanks, Andrew. I mean, the first thing is what we're trying to build. Our ambition is to build personal superintelligence, which means putting superintelligence in the hands of everyone. Uh, we've got a platform that serves 3.5 billion people every day, so we have some real advantages there. Uh, and we are spending a lot of money to build the, the massive uh, data center and power infrastructure necessary to bring that vision to fruition. Uh, and we're confident that uh, with the right models and the right products, we're going to be able to build personal superintelligence and, and empower everyone. But in terms everyone. of offsetting some of that cost, I mean, you, right now, I think you were probably on, on the sort of edge of the envelope uh, for doing it in terms of uh, um, in terms of the economics of doing it that way compared to some of the others. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into too many of the details right. of the financing. Just to say, we've got a strong core business that helps us fund right. and finance this uh, infrastructure investment, and we're going to look at lots of different ways to bring the strategic capital to bear uh, to make right. sure that we can fund where that infrastructure going Meta, forward. It, where do you think Meta is ultimately right now in the AI race? Which is to say, we talk a lot about OpenAI, we talk a lot about Google and Gemini. You can go down the list, but we don't talk yet uh, at the same with the same sort of cadence uh, about Llama, which, which is the model that you guys have been working on for a long time. Yeah, so we bring a lot of advantages to the race. Like I said, we've got the 3.5 billion people using it. We've got a real lead on wearables, which we think is going to be the next computing technology uh, that actually brings that personal superintelligence to bear because uh, glasses, the partnership we have with Ray-Ban and Oakley, uh, glasses lets, lets, you, lets the AI see what you see, hear what you hear, uh, talk to you throughout the day. So we think that's a, the, the right form factor to bring AI to people. Right. Um, we've got some work to do to catch up on the frontier with our models, I think we're going to get there this year, uh, and then we're going to match but that with our distribution. But is it the model or the other thing is distribution, sorry, on just surface area? So you have amazing surface area, meaning I am as addicted, I hate to say it, to the gram, as the kids say, as anybody. Uh, same with WhatsApp, same with you know people going to a classic blue Facebook, right? The question is how that ultimately translates into the place I go to to either chat with a bot or to do other things for me. Yeah, so right now, we already have a billion monthly active users using Meta AI across our services. So we start with that advantage. Now right. we've got to bring the frontier models to bear, and we've got to release the products that make people want to come and use that uh, as frequently as, as uh, they need in their daily lives to make them more effective, more productive, and just uh, make them enjoy the things that they're doing online. Joel, how do you navigate the political headwinds that are coming out of Washington, coming out of the European Union, coming out of so many different places? Because it, see, it feels to me like businesses that get caught in the cross currents are facing much choppier waters than they were before. Yeah, well, we've had the advantage that, that President Bush, uh, excuse me, President Trump, since he came into office, um, has been really focused on uh, maintaining American leadership in AI and making sure that we win the AI race against China. And that means clearing away the barriers to innovation, whether that's data center and energy permitting, um, whether that's uh, just making sure uh, that we can make the investments with confidence that we need in this infrastructure. Uh, and so we've had that advantage, and that's been a big support for us as we've made these investments. Right. Does it create problems, though, when he says things that irritate European leaders to the point where things have gotten pretty tense? Because you have a lot of business here, too, and I, I thought for a while that the administration might be helping with some of those things to try and tamp back some of the over-regulatory reach from the EU? Is that not the case? And well, they've been a huge, Yeah, they've been a huge ally in mm -hmm. pushing back on some of the discriminatory regulation uh, mm -hmm. that we've seen come out of Europe, and that's been very helpful to us and other American companies. You know, there have been lots of discussions about tariffs over the last year. Mm -hmm. um, so far, we've been able to, to manage and ensure that we can continue to grow our business and, and uh, offer consumers and small businesses throughout Europe uh, the advantages our platforms offer. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to continue going forward. Let me ask you a question. If you think about it like this, 
I would say, and I would say Facebook in particular, or Meta, was always considered, or tried to be, and I think a lot of companies tried to be, quote, neutral companies, globally neutral. Uh, not necessarily even thinking of themselves as American companies versus something else. They were global companies. They'd come here and they'd be global companies. And now there's such an emphasis on national champions. There's such an emphasis, at least in the United States, but I would say because maybe of what's happening in the U.S., the national champions elsewhere. And therefore you see a splintering of all of it. How does Meta, which is a hopefully global company, I imagine, for your purposes, work through that? Well, we're an American company that serves the world. Uh, and we're an American company that's investing massively in AI and AI infrastructure. And we're aligned with the administration in the U.S. that it's very important that we win this battle against China. It's the most critical battle that we'll have over the coming years for both our national and economic security. But that's a, that's a battle that not only the U.S., but all of the Western democracies have a stake in. So we think it's really important that we progress on this together with our friends and allies around the world, uh, because this, this race is too but important not to win. But you see a splintering. We just had Ray Daly on the broadcast, and he made the argument that basically the whole globe is effectively coming undone. Well, so far, we're not really seeing that on the technology front. Uh, obviously, we've got a very serious competitor in China. Um, we need to make sure that we invest the resources, that we clear away the regulatory burdens. That's why it's so important that President Trump has pushed uh, to eliminate discriminatory burdens on AI development and other technology in Europe. Um, we need to make sure that we're aligned and we're harmonized in the way that we approach this, because this is a battle we have to win.